What's up, what's up? Sorry I haven't been doing reviews in a while. It's because I'm moving out of my retail shop. And so, uh, yeah, come take a look. You hear that right now? That's some music playing in the other room. But take a look at my spot right here. It's all, it's all crazy right now. But let's go check out the speakers. That's what you're here for, right? Let's go. Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing some of the most unique bookshelf speakers I've ever reviewed, and they're ones that you can build yourself. So these speakers are a collaboration between 123 Toyd and myself, and my job was to figure out which drivers to use and the overall design goals. 123 Toyd's job was to figure out the crossover network and do the actual build. In addition, his role was also to figure out the dimensions of the box as well as designing this front slotted port. The idea came about because we both built a speaker designed by Paul Carmody and it's called the Voxel and it's using this five and a quarter inch woofer and it's a small enclosure and it's able to hit down to 35 Hertz. And so that's pretty crazy. We decided we can build a bookshelf speaker based on that. Now, one thing that 123Toy did was he redesigned the port because the main issue with that Voxel sub was that it was so powerful, it pushed out so much air that it actually caused some chuffing. So that's port noise and that's something that you don't really want. And so he designed it with a front slotted port. He was able to reduce the chuffing by 50% at 35 Hertz. All of the components were provided to us by Parts Express. Thank you to Parts Express. And all of these parts are available at Parts Express. All right, so here are some of the design goals. I wanted it to be a powered bookshelf speaker. And I also wanted to make sure that it could hit down to 35 Hertz because that's one of the main issues with bookshelf speakers. A lot of times they can play loud and they sound good, but they don't have that much bass, in which case you usually need a sub with them. So again, my goal was to have bookshelf speakers that are not huge, that can hit down to 35 Hertz. I also didn't want them to be too expensive. And all of these parts, including the plans, are under $300. There are definitely less expensive builds like the Overnight Sensations and the C Notes on Parts Express's website, but these are powered. And so if you consider that these are the speakers as well as the amplifiers in each speaker, then it's actually a pretty good deal. Another thing that I wanted is I wanted a three-way design. I wanted a woofer, in this case, we're gonna call it a subwoofer because it hits pretty low, a mid-range driver, and then a tweeter. I also had this tweeter and I wanted to use it in a build. And so I kind of threw that in there, like let's throw in an external tweeter just to mix it up. I think it looks cool, kind of reminds me of some of the Bowers and Wilkins speakers. And it's also the tweeter that's used in some of the Swan speakers. I also wanted it to be tunable. So most of the time you'll get a speaker and it has a specific sound signature that was designed by that manufacturer and you can't change it. It's just how it is. This, you can actually change. So those were the design goals. Now let's move on to the name. They're called the Dynas. And this is a name that you guys came up with. We asked a bunch of you guys what we should call these speakers. And on Reddit, somebody by the name of Ben Lurking is back, came up with Dynas, which stood for, do I need a sub? And we thought that was great. It fit perfectly with what we're trying to do. This is using a Tang Band, five and a quarter inch woofer. And they even call it a subwoofer because it really does play that low. And this thing is ridiculous. Look at the surround on this thing. And that is part of the secret as to why it can hit so low. It has an X max of 9.25 millimeters. That's crazy. Check it out. Have you seen a bookshelf speaker with a surround that looks like this? I haven't. So this is a paper cone driver, which I like. I feel like paper gives it a warmer sound. Let's move on to the mid range. And so this mid range is using a Dayton reference RS100-4. And so this is very special because it actually has a real phase plug and it's using an aluminum cone. Very good reviews on their website. So we decided to use that one. The mid range is capable of playing from 80 Hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So we actually don't need this tweeter. But like I was saying, I wanted it to be different. So it was a design challenge to try to figure out a way to incorporate this into the system. And one thing that I found out is a dedicated tweeter usually can hit the high notes better, clearer than a full range driver, which is what this is. That's why we have this external tweeter, even though the Dayton can go all the way to 20 kilohertz. I think it looks really cool. As far as the tweeter itself, it's a one inch soft dome tweeter. All right, so here's where it gets real interesting is on the back, you'll see a plate amp 
on each one of these speakers. So each one has its own amplifier section. According to Parts Express's website, the amplifier is rated at 60 watts for the woofer section and 30 watts per channel. Now this is a plate amp and it's supposed to be used for a 2.1 channel audio system, but we decided to use one plate amp per speaker so that we could drive the woofer and then each one of these would have its own amplifier as well. And that's useful for many reasons. One of the main reasons is that you don't have to have a complex crossover network, passive crossover network. Usually if you're building a crossover for a three-way design, the crossover can get pretty complex. And so we wanted to make sure that it was simple to build and these plate amps allowed us to do that. Entire crossover only costs $1 and any single person that I know of could probably build these. And that's because these are meant to be used with a subwoofer and so it has a adjustable low pass crossover that also means that you can adjust the level for the woofer section. It also has a built-in high pass crossover for the mid range and the highs of 100 hertz with a six decibel slope. This section also has its own adjustments so you can adjust the gain on the mids and the highs. So I think that's super cool because you can actually adjust each speaker independently based on where they're placed in the room. So let's say if it's in the corner, you may want to be able to turn down the bass on one speaker and not the other. And so that's something that's really cool about these. They're standalone. You don't need a fancy DSP. You don't need a high-end receiver with room correction. You can do a lot of that just using the controls on the plate amplifier. Each one of these has its own power supply. The one I'm using is 19 volts and 4.74 amps, which is not exactly that 120 watt theoretical maximum, but you can get up to a 22 volt, five and a half amp power supply and theoretically be able to get this to the maximum wattage. One of the things is you're gonna also need RCA splitters because this does need both RCAs to be connected. So you're gonna need one for each of the speakers. Another thing that's cool about this plate app is that it actually has RCA outputs too. So that means if you wanted to, you could connect other speakers, a sub, you could go crazy with it. Now the wood that he used for this build is Baltic Birch. Now you can use MDF, and that would also work, but I think this looks awesome. And he also did a great job with this chamfer. I think that looks very different and something that I haven't seen before where it stops midway. Great job, I love it. Now again, all of the components are available on Parts Express's website. I'll leave a link to each one of these components as well as the build plans from 123Toyed. So what you really wanna know is how do they sound, right? Amazing bass. Amazing bass. Uh, yeah, they have amazing bass, that's, that's it. So check it out. These can go down to 35 hertz at minus three decibels. And I've even measured an F10, which is minus 10 decibels, at 25 hertz. That is crazy for a bookshelf speaker. Unheard of. Now, if I play these really loud, I can still get it to chuff. It's just too much air coming from this. I'm wondering if maybe rounding out the corners and maybe flaring the port would help with that. But just to give you an idea how much bass and how much air is coming out of these, I could feel air coming from these when they were six feet away. like. I could seriously feel air coming. I was like, what is that? Why does it feel cool right here? Because air was coming from these speakers. A while back, I reviewed a Vizio soundbar and it had a subwoofer and you can read the reviews. The sub is crazy on that thing. And it was using, I think a six and a half inch driver and it was producing crazy amount of bass to the point where it was shaking stuff and it was rattling all kinds of things at different frequency ranges. This is what these sound like. It sounds like two subs but sitting on top of your desk. I know they say it's all about that bass, but there's more to a speaker than just bass. So the mids and highs on these are very refined, and that's what I was most impressed with. I knew that the sub was gonna sound really good. I was really impressed by how the Dayton mid-range sounded in combination with the external tweeter. They just blended very well, and the imaging and soundstage was solid. I could hear details, no problem. And so that's the problem with speakers that have a ton of bass. Sometimes it's just overpowering and all you hear is bass and the rest sounds muffled. Not with these. The mid range and the highs can keep up with this woofer. And that's very important. Now, another thing is you'll notice that the tweeter is placed slightly behind the front baffle and that can cause issues if you're below the tweeter. As long as your ear level is above the tweeter, which mine are, then you won't have any issues. I asked Nick why he set it back that way and he said it's because that's where it was time aligned and it caused issues to move it forward. So he had it set back and it sounds good to me. One thing I would say is that because these are getting maybe 20, 25, 30 watts, they can run out of steam at extremely loud volumes. You have to be realistic with what your expectations are. So these are still bookshelf speakers. They're not gonna play in a huge room, but 
here at my desk, they're way more than enough. I wouldn't want to play them as loud as they can play. I was talking to Nick and he said it was possible to perhaps use a passive crossover to make the slope a little bit steeper on these, which will allow them to play louder without distortion. So I've tried them in my listening area, which is a pretty big room, and they sounded fantastic. I wanted to hear them here at my desk and they sound unbelievable. These are easily the funnest, the bassiest, and the craziest speakers that I've ever heard at my desk here. And keep in mind, I have floor standing speakers at my desk at home. So these are extremely impressive. Just to give you an idea, when the bass hits on these, I feel it in my legs. So I've had a sub before where the sub was under the desk. And yeah, you could feel the bass down there because there's a sub down there. These are above the desk, but I still feel the bass in my legs. Crazy. Another thing that I was impressed with about these is that they're very quiet at my desk. Other powered speakers, sometimes you can hear a hiss when you're near them. With these, I can't hear anything. Very quiet. What can I say? They sound so good. I wish that they could play louder, but I think that we've really reached the constraints of how loud and how low a speaker could play with a box this size. So the only way would actually be to make a similar version, but bigger. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have a sound demo today because I'm actually moving out of my retail space here. And so I need to find a studio, but as of right now, I'm not set up to be able to do the sound demos. But you can take a look at the measurements that I did of these speakers, so you can check it out here. As you can see, they're not the flattest sounding speakers in the world, but they're not terrible either. And remember how I said that these are tunable? There are different ways that you can set this up. Here's a way that I set it up so it was as flat as possible. And as you can tell, it doesn't reach that 35 hertz that I was saying earlier, right? But if I change the settings to something like this, where I lower the crossover point and I increase the gain on the subwoofer portion, then you can see that I can hit 35 hertz. There's that 25 hertz at F10, but there's a big bump around 100 hertz. Now, if you watch my video about DSP, you know that you could correct for that hump and make these flat and still hit low. So that's an option. So as always, we have to go to the speaker leaderboard and see where these place. All right, so here we are at the speaker leaderboard. Now it's having an issue uploading the photo but I'm sure that'll be resolved later. So where did the Dinah's place for best bookshelf? This is gonna be a tough one. Uh, are they better than the UB5s and the Diamond 11.1s? Mm, so these, let me just show you here. The Dinah's will play lower than the Ultra Bookshelf, than the UB5s, than Diamond 11s, than the Prime Bookshelf, all of these. It's gonna play lower than these, but it will not play as loud as the ultra bookshelf and because they're not as flat they're also not as refined but they're way more fun it's just it's adjustable man it's gonna be a tough one these are a special case because they are a, a diy speaker also they're definitely gonna be above the ai 60s because they don't have that compression that i noticed with the ai 60s so that's for sure there now are they better than the prime bookshelf you know what, honestly, I would rather, <laughs> I would rather use these than the Prime Bookshelf, uh, just because there's just, they're just extremely fun speakers. But I think for most people, I'm talking about most people, if I had to make a recommendation as to what they should buy, these are just an easier purchase, right? But, mm, that's so tough. Look, I'll tell you what, I could easily put this right here, right? I could put them above the UB5s and all these because of the bass response and because they have an amplifier. But just because this is for the general public, I'm gonna put them safely above the AI60s. Now, as far as best for desktop, that's easy. I don't know that these are beatable on a desktop. Nothing will sound like these on a desktop unless they have a woofer like this that can play that low. So that's easy. They're definitely number one for the desktop. Now, the parts will cost under $300 to build. You will have to build them yourself. So best under $500. They're definitely gonna be here above the AI60s. Man, I really wanna put them above the Diamond 11.1s actually. I'm gonna do that right now and see what happens. Let me change this here. But that would mean I have to go above the Prime Bookshelf for best speaker. You know what? I'm going to do it. You guys can get mad at me if you want. There it is. That's what I really think. Because I've had these Wharfdales on my desk. And uh, they're not as impressive for sure. 
the prime bookshelf nah i wouldn't want those at my desk they're big all right so the dinas as far as best overall sound mm, let's see here i'm gonna go ahead and put them right here above the diamond 11.1s above the prime bookshelf above my favorite budget towers above the fi.2s above the ai 60s so there they are let's see one two three four fifth place not bad so that's where they place and to answer the question at the beginning do i need a sub i don't think so so that is the review of the Dinas, my collaboration with 123Toid. It was a pleasure working with him. Make sure to check out his channel. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you're interested in my podcast or extras, I have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Joe Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.